Let us think just for a moment about Columbus. Think of the, the initiative he had to start out sailing for an unknown place. He must have had <coughs> truth behind him. He must have felt God in him. And he had the faith to know that God would guide him. So he used those cardinal requirements, the ABCs of initiative. When he started out, he had, he had truth. He knew according to divine law that God would lead him. He had the faith in which he retained his calmness and didn't turn back at various stages. And he did it, showing that he used action. If he'd had that great dream in his mind, he probably did for a while. But he got it out into the realm of realization of his dream. And he performed action. Take the case of Lindbergh. I think that's one of the greatest. Think of the faith and the realization of divine law within him that God was with him. And finally, think of the courage it took to put it into action, which he did. He used initiative. Why? Because he used those cardinal requirements. Truth, that God was with him. You read his book, you will see he knew that. Faith, in which he had the calmness to carefully, calmly plot out his course. And when the different emergencies came up, he handled them, as you read in his book. Why? Because he was one with God through faith. And the greatest thing, he did it. He didn't just keep it here. He did it. He put it into action. So there you have a couple illustrations of one of the definitions of initiative. A first move. Be different from somebody else. I think he was the first one, wasn't he, to fly the Atlantic alone? From New York to Paris took lots of initiative. It took lots of those three things. Truth, faith, and action. So we must do that in our daily life. Going on now to another phase of self-reliant enterprise, which is an illustration of initiative. Take the pioneers. Pioneers in all walks of life, they have to have initiative. Otherwise, they wouldn't be pioneers. It's a difficult course, as the Master used to say about self-realization. He said pioneers have a, a hard time. I'll say they do. If you had known what the Master went through in the early days and those who struggled along with him, you would realize it takes these three cardinal requirements of true faith, an action to push it forward. So, any self-reliant enterprise means an expression of in initiative as the establishing of self-realization fellowship. And then we take other, other uh, incidences like, or instances like the settling of America. Those people felt the truth within them. They felt the divine law within them that God was with them and that they as children of God should have the freedom of religion and all other things for which they came to America. They felt those three necessities for initiative. And they had the faith, did they not? As you read about their episode, what they went through the first winter. Why? Because they had the faith. And of course they put it into action. That's why they came here. And that's why they stayed instead of returning when things did not turn out as they wished they would. And so remember, self-reliant enterprise is an expression of great initiative as illustrated by pioneers and early settlers than we have in the scientists. Scientists use initiative all the time, ferreting out, working out new methods to find out eternal truths. And they, too, are guided by the three cardinal necessities for initiative. Scientists try the new. They're not satisfied with the what. They try something new, and they use their initiative to do that. In medicine, I cannot help but thinking about these many teams of, of uh, medical men who work in the laboratory, laboratory teams, where they find out these different things, incessantly using their initiation, uh, initiative to find out these new things such as insulin, antibiotics, and synthesized chemicals of which we read. 
Now, that just didn't happen. They used their initiative to find out these new things. And think of the surgeons. Surgeons try these new and radical operations. It takes lots of nerve. And it takes initiative to do that. But you say, well, wouldn't we, wouldn't we be just as well off without that? No. Look how the lifespan has increased. Look at the conditions here, sanitary conditions, health conditions. Why? Because those medical men, health officers, scientists, took the initiative. And we're not satisfied with the rut. They got out of the rut that uh, mankind might be better off. And so we have there several illustrations of the courageous initiative of scientists or any self-reliant enterprise. Now going on to the next one, to get out of the rut. To get out of the rut, it takes initiative, doesn't it? It's very easy to sit down and just be like your grandfather was or your father and uh, your forebears and say it's good enough for them, good enough for me. That's no way. As I have said, what if all the scientists felt that way? What if all the health officers felt that way? And these laboratory teams felt that way, did nothing. We're much better off. There's no question about it. Especially when we consider the lifespan, which has increased quite a few years. Why? Because they took the initiative. And so they didn't stay in the rut. They got out of the rut.